trichromes. So last month, I took some of these color photos on black and white film. Now when you look at them, you may think, well, where's the color? Well, in this video, I'll explain exactly that, how these turned into this. Before I talk about my photos though, I'll first briefly mention the history of trichrome photography. Now in photography's early days, before trichrome photography was discovered, artists used to color or hand paint black and white images to simulate color. But this is not the color photography I want to talk about in this video. In 1802, the young Helmholtz theory suggested that our eyes consist of three types of photoreceptors that correspond with three regions of the visible light spectrum. Now remember that almost two centuries before this, Isaac Newton had already proven via his prism experiment that even clear light is composed of colors, specifically Roy G. Biv, or red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet, which are the main colors in the visible light spectrum. The young Helmholtz theory simplifies Newton's findings even further by basically stating that in Roy G. Biv, our eyes gather information from three specific channels. The longest wavelengths, or the reds, the middle of the spectrum, or the greens, and the shortest wavelengths, or the blues or violets. Now fast forward to 1855, Scottish physicist James Clerk Maxwell proposed that all colors are merely combinations of varying intensities of red, green, and blue. Six years later, in 1861, Thomas Sutton followed Maxwell's theory and created the first color image by creating three black and white images of a tartan ribbon. In one shot, he used a red filter, in another, he used a green filter, and in the final shot, he used a blue filter. And then, these were developed and turned into positive images, and then projected on a screen with their corresponding filters. So to clarify, Sutton isolated the three primary color regions and then combined them to create varying colors. This seemed foolproof, so why did the resulting image look like this when an actual tartan ribbon looks like this? Well, it's because of one thing, photochemistry. You see, back in those days, Photographic emotions were orthochromatic, meaning they were for the most part only sensitive to the shorter end of the visible light spectrum, so they were not so sensitive to red and green light. That's why this image is predominantly blue and purple, although I suppose you can kind of see subtle hints of red and green here and there. This is why Trichrome photography did not become so mainstream until around the early 20th century when panchromatic emulsions were introduced. Panchromatic means that the emulsion is sensitive to the entire visible light spectrum, perhaps even reaching infrared or ultraviolet. Most black and white film still being produced today is panchromatic with the notable exception of Ilford Ortho Plus, which, as the name suggests, is orthochromatic. So, a quick recap. Color images can be made from black and white film by taking three pictures, one with a red filter, one with a green filter, and one with a blue filter, and then combining them together. Alright, seems pretty simple, so now, let's take some trichromes. So I got my Pentax ME Super and my SMC Pentax 55mm f1.8 prime lens. This lens has a filter size of 52mm, so I got these filters for a rather cheap price second hand. A Kenko SR62R1 red filter, a Kenko P00 green filter, 
and a Kenko MCC4 blue filter. Now keep in mind that these particular filters are not recommended for 100% accurate trichrome photography because they have varying intensities. You can see here how the red filter is clearly darker and more intense than the blue and green filters. However, this can easily be fixed in post-production, which I ended up doing, so I didn't really mind. I then loaded a roll of Burger Pancro 400 into my camera and set up my tripod. Now keep in mind that when taking trichromes, the exposures have to be as aligned as possible, so I had to keep it steady on the tripod and insert a cable release into my camera so that there is as little movement as possible. After taking my first exposure with the red filter, I then very carefully wound the film, making sure not to move anything before taking the next exposure with the green filter. I did the same thing until I completed my final exposure with the blue filter. Then I developed it in Ilfosol 3 1 plus 9 dilution and I got my photos. Well, it seems in this role I completely messed up development because the film was very fogged. In any case though, I scanned the negatives on my Plustech Optic Film 8200i dedicated 35mm film scanner and I put the images to be trichromed in Photoshop. I followed Attic Darkroom's video for this and it was pretty simple. First, I turned all of my images into grayscale photos. Then I combined the layers, making sure that the correct exposures were the correct channels and voila, color. Like I said before, the exposures ended up pretty messy because of the bad development, but after aligning the individual layers I ended up with at least an acceptable set of my first trichromes. I tried once more with the roll of Ilford XP2 Super, which I cross-processed in black and white chemistry, and thankfully, this roll did not turn out fogged. Now, I filled this roll completely with trichromes, and because of that, I basically only had 12 images instead of the normal 36. Granted, I had 36 individual black and white photos, but, you know, those are just 12 compositions. And so, basically, 12 images. You can see here when I combine these exposures that there's a slight blue or green color cast because like I mentioned earlier, the blue and green filters I used are not as dark or intense as the red filter, so I had to color correct this in Photoshop. I also shot some plants in our garden which were moving because it was quite windy that day, and moving subjects as I've come to know is a rather common theme among modern day trichrome photographers to illustrate a changing environment in a sort of psychedelic way. This is seen in clouds, people, cars, and other similar things, and in my case, since the plants were fixed and it was just the leaves that were moving, you can see what feels like over-exaggerated chromatic aberrations, and I kind of like that effect. This shot in particular beautifully shows off the hexagonal bokeh of these vintage Pentax lenses. The tree's leaves are moving of course, so the light coming from that tree changed between exposures and created this nice rainbow-like effect. So why shoot trichromes? Well, to be honest, I don't know either. As someone who, when it comes to film, exclusively shoots black and white nowadays, it's just a fun thing to experiment with, and I think it's quite satisfying to see all three exposures perfectly line up and create lifelike colors. Trichromes, based on my granted very little experience, definitely have a different look to them than regular color negative film, and some of these shots on XP2 in particular kind of remind me of slide film with that bluish color cast which I just can't seem to correct. Anyway. That's about it for this video, leave your thoughts in the comments below 
and thank you so much for watching. Once again, this July is another film month on the channel, and if you want to see more of this kind of content, support me by liking the video and subscribing and doing all of that YouTube algorithm stuff and well, that's about it from me. So I hope all of you are having a wonderful morning, afternoon, and evening wherever you are, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.